Hello everyone, Charcoal here and welcome back to A Closer Look. Today we're looking at the Silkwings and Hivewings. I'll be going over their biology, society, and history, then giving them an overall score. These tribes have a lot of overlap, particularly in the society and history sections, and I didn't want to do two videos where I was mostly repeating myself, so I decided to lump them together into one. And it should go without saying that this video will contain a lot of spoilers for Book 15, as well as the third arc in general, so if you haven't read it, this is your chance to click off. You have been warned. Let's get started. Let's do the silk wings first. The defining features of a silk wing are their long horns, antennae, and large butterfly-like wings with pretty patterns on them. They can spin silk from their wrists, and some silk wings are able to create flame silk, which is a special kind of silk that can glow and be used to burn stuff. If they train enough, they can control the temperature and luminosity when they release it. Silk wings hatch with no wings, but at age 6 they undergo a metamorphosis, where they weave themselves into a cocoon of silk and emerge with wings a week later. Their scales can be pretty much any color in existence except black. The call signs of a hive wing are their incredibly slender bodies, extra horn on the bridge of their nose, and wings similar to those of a bee or hornet. Unlike silk wings, hive wings have their wings from birth. They can have several different biological weapons, such as emitting a harsh stench, shooting boiling acid from their fangs, or paralyzing stingers on their wrists or tail. The specific abilities vary from dragon to dragon, and it is possible for a hive wing to have no biological weapons at all. Hive wing scale colors can range from dark red to bright yellow, really anywhere on the warm color spectrum. However, they always have at least some black from their common ancestor clear sight. Hive wings might have green blood, but this was only shown to be the case with queen Queen Wasp, and it's entirely possible that's only a side effect of having the Breath of Evil in her system for so many decades. The Silkwings and Hivewings have been involved in a few different societies, but the only one we know a substantial amount about is the most recent one, the Hive System, so that's the only one I'm going to talk about. The Silkwings and Hivewings were both ruled by the Hivewing Queen Wasp and lived together in a series of hives around Pantala, each one controlled by one of the Queen's female relatives. Silkwings made up the lower class and were tasked with doing most of the dirty work no one else wanted, or being a servant to a Hivewing. They went through school until their metamorphosis, at which point they were assigned a job and where they'd be working. At least one member of each Silkwing household was required to be working at all times, so if you were like Dusky here, a two-year-old orphan with no siblings, too bad, you were gonna be working. When a flame silk was discovered, they were taken to an underground factory where they would be put to work producing flame silk. Hive wings were the upper class and enjoyed much more luxurious lives. Technology on Pantala seems to be much more advanced than Pyria, with greenhouses, eye doctors, books instead of scrolls, candy stores, and they even have coffee. I've said it before and I'll say it again, there is a dragon Starbucks somewhere in these hives and I will not rest until I see it. Now let's talk about everybody's favorite topic, religion. Both tribes worship Clearsight as a deity, with a temple to her being located in Wasp Hive, where a hive wing called the Librarian guarded the Book of Clearsight, a collection of prophecies and predictions Clearsight wrote down before she died. Silk wings can be named after different types of butterfly or moth like Blue and Admiral, and hive wings can be named after bugs like Cricket or Scarab and types of Bee or Wasp. Before I talk about silk wings or hive wings, I first need to talk about the beetle wings. Just over 5,000 years ago, Pyria was a continent ruled by three human empires. After a long campaign led by Cottonmouth to steal dragon eggs from their nests, the dragons retaliated by burning down human civilization in an event known today as the Scorching. After the Scorching, the beetle wings eventually evolved from whatever dragons existed at the time, if beetle wings didn't exist already, and at some point came into conflict with the other tribes. They, along with the leaf wings, fled Pyria and went west to Pantala. They arrived to find Pantala overgrown with a plant called the Breath of Evil, which unbeknownst to them was being used by Cottonmouth to control all the animals on the continent. They were able to clear almost all of the vines away, leaving what little was left in the poison jungle. The beetle wings and leaf wings lived together for a long time, until Clearsight showed up about 2,000 years before present day. She mated with a lot of beetle wings and had a lot of children. Before she died, she wrote the Book of Clearsight, and the last of her visions was dated about 1,000 years before present day. 500 years before present day, the beetle wings finally finally split into two tribes. The descendants of Clearsight and those who mated with her became the Hivewings and were tasked with protecting the Book of Clearsight, and the descendants of those who did not mate with Clearsight became the Silkwings. Fifty years before present day, the Silkwings, Hivewings, and Leafwings all had their own kingdoms with their own queens, Monarch of the Silkwings, Wasp of the Hivewings, and Sequoia of the Leafwings. Wasp grew power-hungry and started making false claims that the Book of Clearsight demanded that the other two tribes give up their kingdoms and bow to the Hivewings. Queen Monarch said, okay, sure, and resigned immediately, and sometime after that the hive system was developed. Sequoia, however, wasn't about to go down without a fight, a fight that evolved into a decades-long conflict known as the Tree Wars. 
During the war, the Leafwings rediscovered the Breath of Evil and tricked Wasp into eating a bit of it at a peace conference, thinking it would allow them to control her. Or at least, that was their plan. That's not actually what happened. Wasp instead gained the ability to inject other dragons with it and control them, which she started doing with any new Hivewing eggs that came about. The war continued and the Leafwings were nearly wiped out, retreating to the Poison Jungle. With the exception of the Poison Jungle and this patch up here for some reason, Wasp saw to it that almost every tree on the continent be destroyed. Arriving at present day now in Cicada Hive, Silkwing brother and sister Blue and Luna are about to have their metamorphoses, and their wrists start to glow orange, indicating that they are flame silks. Luna starts her metamorphosis and is taken away in her cocoon by some Hivewing guards. Blue escapes and comes across a Hivewing named Cricket, whose egg had been laid in secret and was never injected with the Breath of Evil, so Wasp couldn't control her. Blue and Cricket then recruited Luna's boyfriend, Swordtail, to help find Luna. The group later encounters three Leafwings, Sundu, Belladonna, and Hemlock, and agree to help steal the Book of Clearsight from Wasp Hive in exchange for the Leafwings telling them where the Flamesilks are kept. They get the book, but Blue is captured in the process and taken to the Flamesilk factory, where he meets his father Admiral and witnesses Luna emerging from her cocoon. Luna and Blue escape, and during a fight with some Hivewing soldiers in a storm, Luna tries to use her Flamesilk, but the strands are somehow blown together into a parachute which carries Luna across the ocean all the way to Pyria, because that makes sense. Luna meets a bunch of Pyrian dragons and is able to inform them of what's happening on Pantala. Blue has his own metamorphosis almost immediately after Luna gets blown away. Once he emerges, the gang heads to Jewel Hive, and after a bunch of shenanigans that don't really matter, Cricket finds herself in the hatchery, where she witnesses Wasp injecting eggs with the Breath of Evil. She manages to save an orphaned egg, which hatches into Bumblebee. The group then decides to go to the Poison Jungle and meet the Leafwings. A Leafwing named Hawthorne claims to have found a cure for the Breath of Evil, and when Wasp finds out their location and sends an army of Hivewings to their doorstep, step, they burn the cure to get the Hivewings to inhale the smoke. However, the cure ends up actually being the Breath of Evil in disguise, and Blue, Swordtail, and many Leafwings are put under its control. A map to Pyria is discovered inside the Book of Clearsight, and Cricket, Bumblebee, the remaining Leafwings, and a few hundred Silkwings who were freed from the Hives all evacuate Pantala. In their absence, Wasp has the Poison Jungle completely leveled. Upon arriving on Pyria, acting Leafwing Queen Hazel represents all the Pantalan dragons in a summit with the other queens to decide what to do about the other mind situation, and Luna and Cricket are sent on a mission back to Pantala. Cricket didn't really do much, but Luna managed to find Cottonmouth's throne room. After looking through some memories and Wasp getting her face melted by Pineapple, which somehow doesn't kill her, Luna is able to sever the Breath of Evil's main vine and burn away its roots, killing the plant for good and freeing everyone who was under its control. In the aftermath of this victory, Wasp and her sisters were imprisoned in the old Flamesilk factory, and her cousin Lady Jewel becomes the new Hivewing Queen. The Hivewings continued to live in the hives, but the Silkwings went off to start a new kingdom with the Leafwings, with an entire assembly as its governing body. And that is where the Silkwings and Hivewings history, at least so far, ends. So, my final thoughts? These two tribes are decent, but they were always going to be overshadowed by the others. The Pyrian tribes got two whole arcs, four winglets, and a legends book to get fleshed out, meanwhile the Pantalan ones are limited to the third arc only. I don't dislike either of them though, so I'm gonna give both the Silkwings and Hivewings a 6 out of 10, just above the Mudwings. Time for this week's featured fan art. We've got pieces from Arkstone, Dragon's Favorite Ice Cream, Mixlander, Silvertail, and I'm not even going to try pronouncing that. Thanks a bunch, guys, and if any of you want to submit your own fan art, you can do so in my Discord server. This has been Wings of Charcoal, and I will see you all in the next video.